You are now listening to the Inner Circle Podcast Network. Hashtag no offense uses strong language and is intended for a mature audience. Listener discretion is advised. Hashtag no offense. Welcome back to another episode of Hashtag No Offense. My name is Chris, and I'm joined by the lovely Duchess. Happy Valentine's Day, cocksucker. Whoa, just diving right in. Nobody needs no personal life. What do you mean? You called me a cocksucker. It's very public. That's not a personal thing. That I don't suck cock? Just don't do much anything, <laughs> but it's my day. Oh, that's terrible. It's Valentine's Day. It's my day. I did something the other day. That, that was... Yeah. That was good. Mm-hmm. Uh, you made it awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I have a tendency to do that. This episode and every episode of the Hashtag No Offense Show is sponsored by Hemp Bombs CBD. Hemp Bombs is a local Tampa Bay CBD company that specifically formulates their product to provide consumers with a quality CBD product at an affordable price. The many benefits of Hemp Bombs include reduced anxiety, increased sense of relaxation, reduction of aches and pains, mood enhancement, and deeper, more restful sleep. Hemp Bombs come in a wide variety of products, including oils, gummies, suckers, vapes, and even products for your pet. Use code HTNOS at HempBombs.com to save 20% on your entire order. And we are at the tail end of the vape order, or the the vape sale. So if you get this episode immediately on Sunday, you probably will have about 12 more hours to use HTNOS50 to save half off of all of the vape products on HempBombs.com. That is through midnight on Sunday the 16th. HTNOS50. Half off on vapes. I don't want to make it awkward, so I'm staying quiet. You're making it awkward That's, with your face. That is the quickest that we've ever gone into sponsors in our HTNOS history. Do you like it? Do you like what I'm doing here? I have an agenda. I don't know. I have an agenda here. I thought maybe because I made it awkward, you were like, all right, sponsors, go. No, 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 no. See, I want to get it out of the way so that we can play. <sighs> it's another innuendo. All right, go ahead. <laughs> We are also sponsored by Onnit.com. Onnit is a health and fitness juggernaut Mm -hmm. dedicated to delivering complete and total human optimization. Through a wide variety of products and supplements, Onnit combines cutting-edge science, earth-grown nutrients, and time-tested strategies to help people reach their peak performance. Alpha Brain, New Mood, Shroom Tech, Gut Health. Still waiting on that. Kettlebells, Battle Ropes, Mm -hmm. Titty Shirts. They got titty shirts. Everybody's got titty shirts. Mm -hmm. Titties are the best. The Plunge don't have titty shirts. Why you're obsessed just, with the plunge right just now? Just beanies and wet butter. Why are you obsessed with the plunge right now? I'm not obsessed with them. You are. You talk about the plunge more than anybody. That's not true. Yes, you do too. When? Oh, more than anybody. <laughs> I like the plunge. Go to Onnit. Riley's my favorite. He's no one's favorite. Go to onnit.com slash HTNOS <laughs> and save ten percent on your entire order of awesome supplements. Onnit.com O N N I T slash H T N O S. Uh baby, today is Valentine's Day. I love you. I know. I love you, too. I'm excited. Why are you excited? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking stupid. Well, I mean, the kids celebrate it more than the adults do, I think. That's not true. What do you mean? You're just speaking from your perspective. Well, yes, because uh, I waited last minute and had to spend $70 at CVS on cheap Valentine's and chocolates. For the you classes. No, you ain't, you ain't have to. Don't say it like that. You ain't yes, ha- I did. Why, why'd you have to, to spend that it, much money? To make an experience for the kids. Oh, believe me, I didn't want to spend that much, but that's just what CVS does. Price, Price gouging. I literally got like two things Uh-oh. for the teachers. Yeah, and they Lu- capitalized. Then Lucas had to get a little bear for his friend London. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Mm-hmm. I got you something. Yeah, I love it. And you said, ha ha, I hope you like nothing because that's what you got. <laughs> it's true. Well, we usually don't do Valentine's no, Day we don't. like that. We don't. But I, it, this year, it, more so than other years, it's the um, the thing to hate on people that don't do Valentine's Day. I've like heard it more this year than ever in the past. Really? Why? But they're making fun of us because they're like, well, you can do it every day. I'm going to celebrate you on a random day. Like all this stuff that we normally say because we're like, fuck Valentine's Day. It's, right. it's fucking stupid. Yeah. So they're flipping it this year. So I'm not, I'm not going to say it. You know, I love love. I mean, like, or, I mean, I used to be uh, super duper romantic, you know, but we've covered that before. You murdered that part of my I do. Person, personality. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, 
like, whatever. We just appreciate each other every day, which is super cliche, but that's the fucking truth. Right. And, and I wasn't expecting anything, but... That's why I, I do it. I know. That's why it's I the do same it. thing for you. So I got a salt rock lamp, which I love, because I've been wanting one of those for a long time. Just a small token. It's not like, you know, you got to break the bank to fucking prove somebody that you love them. No. You know, just a small little, hey, I know you said you wanted one of these, mm-hmm. and here you go. And cool. there's a little note that was prepared by the fine folks at Amazon. Yes. <laughs> Because <laughs> I see them once in a while. I'm like, oh, those would be cool to have. And then we went to the float tanks and they had one in the room. I was like, oh, that's really cool. And then when we go to Rainforest Cafe, they had that big wall of them. And I always like looking at them and stuff. So oh, was, that's right. We are going to get one last time we were there. Mm-hmm. And then you didn't want to carry the bag. No, I didn't want to carry the bag. Because we were at Downtown Disney. Right. So I didn't want to carry the bag. So it was really nice surprise and I appreciated it. Adam, Adam Simmons used to have one in the compound. Rest in peace, the compound. Aww. And I, when I was there, not this past time, this year, but last year, I saw it. And I think that was the first time I ever like really saw one in like person. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was dope. And I wanted one too. And What's really cool is it has a knob on it so you can make it like dim or like really bright. So I've been sleeping with it on. Yeah, it's fucking ambiance. I can shit. feel the Puritans. Like. Pilgrims? <laughs> Purities? Puritans? You got pilgrims dancing around your bed? It's Valentine's Day, it not Thanksgiving. <laughs> got evil spirits in them? <laughs> they love Puritans. Uh, yeah. So I'm trying something new. I'm drinking this um, sherry because it was go. I made soup tonight and it goes in the soup. I got. To, I'm scared to drink it. I've never had it before. It kind of smells like old people. Uh, I got to be honest with you, it kind of looks like old people. It does kind of look like old people. It says it's a medium dry with full body, blended and aged for a mellow, nutty flavor. You're going to hate that. I don't know. I'm just like staring. The color's pretty. You're going. It's Oh, it's, speaking of the color, you send me a screen capture of the, the thing, like the bottle, so I know what to get when I'm walking through Publix or whatever tonight. Ooh. I told you you was going to hate it. Um, and the picture you sent me was like wild yellow. It was like bright fucking yellow. And then I got there and it was not bright fucking yellow in the bottle. Like it was like cap- capturing the liquid around it. So it was dark as fuck. And I walked up and down the aisle probably five times looking for that stupid bottle. Really? Hell yeah. I was trying to help you out. I know you were. Because but, I, if I put Sherry on unless you're like, what the fuck is this? I would. Where do I find I, this? Yeah, I, I totally would have done that. Yeah. Um, like, what is this, a sauce? You know what? Uh, when I stopped at Publix at, on the way home today, I wouldn't recommend that to anybody to stop at Publix at 5.30 in the afternoon on Friday night anyway. And on but Valentine's being Day. Being that it was Valentine's Day, it was like fucking Black Friday in that motherfucker mm-hmm. with a bunch of clueless ass mid-20s dudes with like Flowers. disheveled hair and fucking like, you know, like confused looks and shit walking around the floral department looking for fucking anything walking see and that's what sucks about valentine's day because you feel like you have li- to yes listen you wouldn't be in there at five thirty on the way home from work if you actually wanted to fucking do it you're doing it out of obligation and that's right. fucking shitty dude yeah it is shitty if you showed up with some fucking chintzy ass goddamn what, what, what's the fucking brand of all them them hearts they all got the same brand what's that fucking brand russell stover is it russell stover's Russell Stover's is good, though, right? It's well, a, I mean, they're all pretty good. But if if you show up with that shitty-ass fucking generic goddamn heart thing, you know, it's like, yeah, come on, dude, you ain't even you trying. Mean. Why are you doing that? You ain't even trying, dude. Come mm-hmm. on. Fuck out of here. It's your pre-ripped jeans. Well, you used to get me jewelry, but I don't wear jewelry. Yeah, I, I spent I still have it. a lot of money on jewelry that you'll never wear, and that's why we don't do that. Mm-hmm. But, um, hey, I have a question for you. All right. So when we, we've done a lot of these shows together now, I mean, you've been here for almost 100 episodes yourself. That's crazy. Since uh, since we've uh, did the switch over and everything. Do you get the feeling sometimes like, you know, I mean, like we, I know you do this as well as I do. You you think all week long, like, damn, I've got to bring that up on Friday. I got to bring that up on Friday. Mm-hmm. And then we get here on Friday and then we fucking do our thing and we talk for an hour and a half. And then as soon as we save the episode, it's like, motherfucker i didn't bring that up and i wanted to fucking talk about it yeah so how long did i ramble about my trip last week 30 minutes well everybody knows at least 30 minutes or so at least how in the fuck did it slip through the cracks that bobby light traded his stash of acid (laughs) for a goddamn unicycle i didn't know unicycles were that expensive well bro i don't know that they oh i don't know why i just called you bro (laughs) 
Because we're friends. <laughs> I don't know why. Th- I don't know why he did it. There's so many questions about that. That was the first thing he come in the house and he was like, um, I think Joe was asking him about mushrooms or acid mm-hmm. or something. He was like, oh, I traded it all. I traded it all for a unicycle. And we were just laughing like because he was, right. thought he was being stupid. And he's like, mm, No, I'm not fucking dead. <laughs> I'm like, What you trying to do? Join the circus? Dude, what you tr- trading for a fucking unicycle? And he was like, oh, that wasn't the first time. That that thing was traded for acid and shit before. Like, that's like the, the fucking... So they just keep trading yeah, acid for unicycles? That, well, like other parties and shit. Like, that's the psychedelic unicycle. Wow. I would love to try to ride a unicycle, though. Did you see the bo- video of Bobby yeah, trying to do fell, it? Yeah, he fell down. He rode that bitch right into a wall and fell. Yeah, he did. <laughs> So that's that cool. was my thing last week. As soon as we were done, I was like, motherfucker. Do you remember that show we used to watch? It was on some man channel. I forget what it was. Some man channel? Aren't uh, they all man channels, no, Melissa? this was like a specific, like we were, when we used to watch the Chinese show with all the... Oh, uh, Most Extreme Elimination Challenge. Yeah, but there was one ex- like more extreme show that had people on unicycles and they were jumping up on... Like cubes and stuff. Do you remember that? They were like doing obstacle it wasn't, courses. It wasn't MXC with them big people in the costumes and the fucking bad it, overdubbing and shit. It might have been that dude, show. Do you remember when they'd be running full clip and they would eat shit and face plant <laughs> into them rocks awesome. and shit? And they're dude. just like babies. They're like, I love to be here. But they're not really saying it. They're just yeah. putting English over whatever they're saying. <laughs> so it's like this big lady dressed as a baby and she's going everything and all you hear is, I love to be here. It's like total Godzilla moment. Put that on the fucking to-do list for this weekend because I need to find that on YouTube. YouTube or something, and we're going to binge MXC. It. Hell yeah, dude. Mm-hmm. Because that's what we used to do when we were in our 20s. Just sit there. I think it was on Spike, like back when Spike yeah, first came to thing or something. Channel that was talking about. It had to be a Spike. Dude, we used to just sit there for hours watching MXC. Because it was that one, and then they had that Man Cave show with Adam Carolla, and they had that cool kitchen or something. Uh, the, uh, the the Man Show. Yeah. Rogan was on there. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think he was on there second after Adam Carolla. Left. I thought it was so cool because it was just like a big kitchen that was the set. They'd like make uh-huh. potatoes and the oven or whatever. I don't believe I ever watched an episode of that show. No, that's no. good. You should have watched it. <laughs> I just, I, I just know at the end they had the chicks jumping on trampolines when yep. the credit was coming yep. down. Well, I used to watch. Was it um, t- Sex Line or whatever it was called with Doctor Drew and Love Line. Pro- Love Line. I used to watch that late night MTV, and then when they started doing the Man Show, I was like, oh, this would be interesting. Dude, we used to listen to Love Line. You remember that shit? It came mm-hmm. on after ten o'clock on Q one hundred and one in Chicago back in the day. I do remember that. I used to, one of the TV shows, everybody would come up and they'd be like silhouetted because they had to be anonymous. My boyfriend stuck his penis in my... Dude, it was always about herpes or something. Yeah. Yeah. All their questions were always about like genital warts and fucking herpes and shit. Like, (laughs) y'all just wild promiscuous. My boyfriend's cum tastes like dirty socks. Does he have a medical problem? Absolutely. Uh, Yeah, bitch, she doesn't clean down there. (laughs) Or he's just jerking off in the socks and then shoving it in your mouth. (laughs) Oh, that's disgusting. (laughs) Oh, I don't want to even think about it. Yeah, the day that I find a sock under somebody's bed and I break that bitch in half and dust flies all over. Fucking cum dust and shit. Yeah, and then you can throw it like ninja stars. <laughs> yeah. Stuck it in the wall. It's stuck in the wall. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, didn't you have something that you forgot last week too? Yeah, we were trying to think about what the Doritos commercial was. Yeah, Last and as week. soon as we stopped it, then we went to watch the ranch. Yeah, and you were like, "Son of a bitch!" I saw Sam Elliott's <laughs> fucking mustache. I'm like, I cannot believe I didn't remember because he's like my favorite. You're old obsessed dude. with him. I know. I totally sit on that. I'd take a mustache ride from him. He's like fucking eighty. I don't care. You don't care. Mm-mm. I mean, like you give me a hard time. I don't discriminate. What, you do. You give me a hard time if I look at bitches in their fucking late forties and you're like, "Hey, he's eighty, but I mean, like, I'll be gentle." I don't give you a hard time about looking at bitches in their late 40s. I think you do. I think no. there's a little judgmental uh, side eye, a little Not under. At all. Yeah, I think there might be. I think you're fronting because it's Valentine's if Day. If you wanted to fuck Liv Taylor in her wheelchair, I might look at you sideways, but. Liv Taylor's in a wheelchair? Yeah, the old lady that has like the white diamonds. Oh, see, I thought you were talking about uh, Steven Tyler's daughter, Liv Tyler, <laughs> from Armageddon. <laughs> Yeah, because they're the same person, dummy. Just, she's fucking younger than me. What are you talking <laughs> about? Stupid. That bitch is in a wheelchair when she got scoliosis. Shout out, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your burritos? <laughs> I keep my burritos small. No. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> What what else what else going on this week? We did we did another Disney trip. That, I mean, we do that all the time. There's no news there. No, um, it was fun though. We went on everything except Mission Space because I feel like I'm going to have an aneurysm. Yeah, that, that if I go on that you. ride, that that I went on it once and I felt sick. Didn't a kid die on there once before? Yeah, a kid. He had 
an aneurysm in his brain and it exploded because yeah. nobody knew it was there. Bro, the one and only time that I went on, I called you bro again. That's okay. Uh, the one and only time I ever went on that ride, I felt like my head was going to constrict yes. into my, sh- like, we I were, was scared. We were on it together. Like, it didn't feel right. Yeah. So I'm like, no, we're not doing that. Subject matter is really cool, though. No, yeah, it Go is. Go to Mars and shit. I was bummed because test, test track was closed. I guess they're refurbishing it. That ain't cool anyway. Well, it wasn't. But it's a, it's kind of a better ride than the slow ass ones that our kids want to go on. So I kind of wanted <laughs> we, just to. We went on a boat through a garden, and, <sighs> and they were teaching you how to make vegetables and shit. <laughs> and Logan's like, "Man, this is fucking interesting." <laughs> I swear to God, he's gonna grow up Living and be Elon Musk, dude. I hope he does. He's gonna be Elon Musk. You know, I heard, speaking of Mars, you know, I heard today that uh, from a guy that used to be a former NASA something or other astronaut or whatever, he was on Rogan. He quit NASA to go work for Elon Musk at mm-hmm. Tesla, and he was talking about elon and like building like the mars travel and shit and elon said that his goal is to die on mars interesting like he wants that's he wants to end his life living on mars interesting they i think there was a super bowl commercial where they found water on mars did you see that do you remember that commercial i don't they found water on mars and they're all in their spaceship and stuff and then some dude makes the soda stream out of the Mars oh, water. Oh, yeah, I did. I did. Yeah, I did <laughs> And they're like, that. he's like, oh, this is good. And they're like, that's the Mars water. And he's like, cheers. <laughs> oh, but we're, um, yeah, the li- it was called Living on the Land was the ride. Yeah. And it was in where Soren was. That's a time kill. That bitch closed at 7 o'clock when we tried to go on it again. <laughs> because it was. It's a time kill. They, yeah, they loved it so much they wanted to go again. That's all that shit is, dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, what else are we doing? We're looking for houses again. We're back on that yeah, shit, house gonna, hunting, looking for the new that. compound. Yeah. It's been about a year since we come on here and we were talking about we were going to get a house and we were going to build, gonna build, build a studio. It. And boy, that fell through quicker than fucking a half of the podcast that I launched know. yesterday. I kind of would like to still try to build something, but I nah, I, ain't I don't know. I'm, it ain't happening. There's no, there's no land where we're kind of looking to move now. Before, we were looking a little further south where there was possibility. Give a fuck. Go fuck. As long as we got we got space to record and we got a goddamn pool that I could swim butt naked in on Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's all I fucking care about. Yep. So we'll see what happens with that. We're having somebody come out on Wednesday to see what we can list for, and then we'll go from there. And then we go because, like we said, Super Bowl is in Tampa next year, and we've got yep. to start planning now I know. to get this in order so if, we can house the fucking fifteen savages from mm-hmm. all over the country next year. If we can list it for what we need and get what we need, then I'd like to move uh, summertime. Uh-huh. Summertime. Summer, summertime. Yep. I don't want you to do it, but you uh, you told me you were going to put our youngest son on blast. Oh. I don't want you to do it. I feel, I'm embarrassed for him, and I'm embarrassed at the potential future version of himself getting a hold of this episode and listening to it. But you said that you were going to do it. So I'm just, um, John Stockton and you, you, you don't have to catch the pass, but I'm throwing it up to you. Here it comes. Well, now you make me feel like a bad mom. Well, I hope I've never have made you feel that way ever. Well, it's kind of embarrassing, but it's kind of funny. <laughs> what, so, what happened? So, Logan has the, we, it's funny because we posted a picture of Logan on Facebook a while back and he has these things called groceries or like little rubber, they look like Shopkins for boys, but they're rubber. They're and gross foods. And then Logan would like put them all over his body and then he oh, had right. those little mini hickeys. Yeah. You remember? Yeah. Cause they're little suctions or whatever. So Lucas likes to play with those in the bathtub and I left to go get him some pajamas and I come back into the bathroom and I open the door and I look at him and he looks up at me. And he tells me, there's a grocery in my butt. <laughs> and I'm like, there's a what in your where? I'm like, he's like, a grocery, it's in my butt. And I'm like, well, let's look in the bathtub. Maybe you it just went under you or whatever. He's like, no, I put it in there. <laughs> it's the it's in there. What doing, dude? So I had to, I drained the bathtub. And he was, it was to the point where he was kind of getting mad at me. Because I'm like, I'm draining the bathtub. I'm looking through it. He's like, it's not in there. It's in my butt. So, I legit put Vaseline on my finger, oh. and I went up there. You didn't tell me that. I went up there. You didn't tell me that. And I felt something what in there. What did he do? Nothing. He didn't do nothing? He didn't even fucking flinch? No. He, I just told him to relax, and then I went up there, and I felt something, but I couldn't tell if it was like those hard pebble poops. Oh. You know what oh. I mean? Sometimes you get those pebble poops. What is wrong with you? <laughs> 
Listen, sometimes being a parent is... Fishing shit out of your kids' butts? Sometimes. Oh. So... I know I was sitting downstairs, and I was chilling, and it was it was Sunday night, and it was like... Because you had left. We When we got out of Disney, you had a nail in your tire. Yeah. And we got home from Orlando, and then the next day you went to my uncle's to get it patched, because my uncle is kind of our mechanic. Yes. And it was late, and you got home, and it was about 8 o'clock, so when you got home, you put them straight in a bathtub. Mm -hmm. By 8.45, you were coming down here all huffy-puffy and shit, throwing stuff around, looking for your keys, and you're like, where his shoes at? And it's almost fucking 9 o'clock, what you need shoes for? I have to take him to the hospital, because he shoved something up his butt. Mm -hmm. I'm like, uh, wait, what? (laughs) Yep. And then, well, first he told me he put it in there, and then he said he sat on it and it was in his butthole. And then he tried to get it out of his butthole, and he ended up pushing it further in. You know how that kid talks about butthole like every ten minutes, I like know. something, something butthole, something, something butthole. I'm like, he's full of shit. He ain't putting nothing up his. That's butthole. what I was thinking. I'm like, there's nothing there, but you can't discredit it. So, and you had told me he's like he's just gonna poop it out, and I'm like, well, I don't know if it's even in there, and I don't, I don't want to make sure that. I get him taken care of because just in case, you know, you always want to be on the safe side. So I go. And you do. S- yeah. I'm, I'm like, fuck him, dude. He's going to either shit it out or fuck him. What? Yeah, well, I didn't want to cause an obstruction and then it get to the point where he's. You watch too much HGTV. I know. Don't be using words HGTV like HGTV, you mean TLC? Whatever, dude. Yeah. He's using stuff like obstruction. That's a normal word. Not for poops. Ugh. <laughs> so I get there and they, now they have these, these stupid things where you have to check in like cvs has it if you're going to the minute clinic like the quest place has that where you have to go to the computer and punch in your information so i'm going in there and and i'm putting in our information and it says reason for visit toy in a butthole i put stuck small toy in rectum rectum i use the clinical term okay so i we sit down and he get called and we go into the room and then the guy's like so what are you here for and i'm like he stuck a small toy in his butt so then another guy comes from around the corner, and he was like, oh, hi, you know, I'm so-and-so, you know, what can I help you with, or why are you here? And I'm like, he was in the bathtub, and he stuck a small toy in his rectum. <laughs> and he was like, oh, it cut off on the screen at the R, so I thought maybe it was like the ear, and I'm like, oh, no, it's a little further south than that. <laughs> oh, so then they take us back into the room. And he's walking kind of funny, but it's not really bothering him that much. Nothing will bother him, dude. Because it's like a rubber toy. So it's not like it's hard or anything in there. It's just kind of like forming to his butthole or whatever. So, forming to his butthole. You know what I mean? Like it's like squishing no, when he yeah, walks or whatever. Yeah, it's forming to his butthole. Yeah. So hey, you ain't drinking none of that nasty it's wine either. really not good. Yeah, it tastes like old people. Yeah, it does. Anyway. And it's named Sherry. Fuck you, Sherry. Yay. Happy so we get, we get into the room, and he was kind of, like, nervous. He was like, are they going to hurt me to get it out? And I I'm like, fucked with him. I, I told said, yeah, him. Yeah, they're, they're going to have to cut it out. No. They're going to have to fucking cut I it out. I was like, buddy, I don't know what they're going to do. I said, they're going to give you an x-ray, and I know that doesn't hurt. But because of the material of it, because it's rubber, they couldn't see it on the x-ray. Mm. And the doctor stuck his pinky in his butt to see if he can feel it. And he's like, well, I don't feel anything. And if he says it's in there, it's got to be in there. He'll just poop it out. And I'm like, <sighs> look at me. I know. Look at me. Goddamn listen. licensed medical professional. You doubt me. That's, that's I why didn't, I, I didn't listen, doubt you. That's I just why wanted I didn't to even flinch. be safe. You want to take him? I said, whatever, dude. Go pay the $200 to the fucking hospital for peace of mind. I'm going to sit here and play Grand Theft Auto with Joe. I'll be here when you get back. Well, yeah, but I just wanted to make sure I was doing the right thing. And if it happens again, then I know that he'll just poop it out. Uh-huh. You know? So then we fucking get... Fucking kid, dude. But $200 he, shit. I know. I know, they gave him some Tylenol, and they gave him some apple juice to help him poop, and they said give him some Marilax or whatever. So then every day since then, I've been giving him a bath, and I'll hold up a grocery, and I'm like, what are we not going to do with this? Put it in my butt. (laughs) That's so (laughs) fucked up, dude. So, but, you know, I had to text my boss about it. I'm like, hey, we're in the emergency room. My kid stuck something in his butt. I got to take him to the hospital. I'm going to take a personal day tomorrow because I didn't want him to go to school and it also be a problem because the doctor said if it causes an obstruction, he might get bloated and it might be like painful for him. So I didn't want him to be at school and then hit them not notice him because there's other kids around. So yeah. I just felt it was better if I stayed home. Word. So I texted him. I'm like, I'm going to take a personal day tomorrow because of this. And he <laughs> he was like, oh, no, take care of him. Um, and then he's like, sounds like something my Luke would do because he has a 
a kid named Luke that's the same, he, that's a year older than him, and he's wild. Our his him and his wife's kids and our kids are kind of the same. Where the older one's the smart one, and the younger one's the wild one. Neither of them are smart. Logan's very smart. He's book smart. <laughs> Common sense, not so much. But he's like, that's like something my Luke would do. And then the next day, everybody fucking knew about it. Because oh yeah, you're the laughing stock. <laughs> you're the laughing stock for, for everybody life now. knew about uh-huh. it. So that's what Wes I didn't said. tell nobody about it. I didn't tell nobody about it. Not one person. Not no. Not, none of my friends. Nobody at work. I didn't tell not one fucking. Per- I don't. I take that back. I told my uncle. Jason. No, I told my uncle about it. I told Jason about it. Wait, we, no, not we even after the fact. I'm a liar. I'm a fucking liar. Because he, t- he called me on Monday to tell me uh, that his kid dislocated his shoulder. And I was mm-hmm. like, I'll see that fucking shoulder and raise you a butthole. <laughs> right. But my boss, Wesley, said the same thing. He's like, that was an expensive poop, huh? And I was like, sure was. Mm-hmm. And then this guy, John, that works with me, every time somebody came out, came down the aisle, he's like, yes. Ask Melissa about her personal day on Monday. And I'm like, really, John? Fucking dick. Really, John? <laughs> and he's like, I'm sorry. I just like hearing the story because he's got two kids that are in middle school and they're two boys and they do dumb shit too. So, Yeah, well, boys do dumb shit. So. And then every once Lesson in a while, learned, Amy that's maybe. behind me, she'll, she'll, she rolled up and she was like, so I got to ask, how did he tell you? And I <laughs> looked up at me and said, I got a grocery in my butt. Mm. But I, I asked, so I had to tell him. I'm like, listen, I'm like, I'm glad you told me because even how how embarrassing it you you feel or whatever. I was like, you need to tell me if something like this happens so we can get it taken care of because you just never know what could happen. This message to future Luke, you're so fucking cool. <laughs> just remember that you're so fucking cool. He's he's a great kid. Sweet P. Mm. Do you want to talk about Florida? Yes. Okay. Hey, Beatrice. Yeah? Get your ass in here. These no fence boys about to do welcome to Florida again. Let me grab the natty. Oh, shit, and I thought my family was <laughs> fucked up. Every week, our What the Fuck Florida stories are sponsored by Official Clothing. Check out official.com, that's O-H-F-I-S-H-L dot com, and use code HCNOS, and you can save 25% off your order of handcrafted t-shirts, hats, and jewelry. Uh, put on a official flip and an official spin on all your favorite corporate and musical and sports logos. Right? Okay. Rooted in hip-hop, right? I don't, say, I don't say that anymore. Rooted. Rooted in hip-hop. Why you say rooted? I don't know, because it's got roots in hip-hop. Do you, know, do you know Kaz is a fucking hip-hop OG? He's rooted. Yeah, I have, we have his album. Yeah, I do. Can't wait for him and Joby to put one out. They got the single coming. Keep yeah. your eyes out. Official clothing. Live by your own rules. First story I have for you is in Ocala, mm-hmm. where a Florida man pulled over a cop what? to ask him for directions. Okay. So, an alleged trunk driver in Florida oh, no. initially declined a breathalyzer test, mm-hmm. telling the deputy sheriff on Sunday, you didn't pull me over, I pulled you over. Oh, my. You can't give me that blood <laughs> breathalyzer because I pulled you over, bitch. Wow. Juan Zamora, 63 years old, gave a puzzling response after flashing his headlights at a Marion County Sheriff's deputy squad car in Ocala in order to ask for directions to an auto parts store. The deputy stopped and smelled alcohol coming from Zamora as he asked the question. The driver, who had a 15-year-old passenger, also oh, no. had bloodshot eyes, the deputy noticed. The 15-year-old had bloodshot eyes? No. Oh. <laughs> he just had a 15-year-old passenger. Yeah, he's riding around fucking all hopped up with his daughter or something. Yeah. You know, because that's a great idea. Also, do you not know what Google Maps is? Well, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> well, he is 63. So maybe he doesn't know what Google Maps is. He doesn't know how to use it, maybe. Zamora allegedly admitted to downing two shots of bourbon earlier in the day. When he finally took his breathalyzer test, he failed, registering mm-hmm. above Florida's .08 legal limit. Mm-hmm. Authorities later found a bottle of whiskey in his car and a white substance, which field tests positive for cocaine in Zamora's shirt sleeve. He was charged with DUI and cocaine possession. Wow. I mean, you really have to be drunk to smell like alcohol. That's not true. That's not true. Because when I leave work on Tuesdays and we have beer at meetings and shit, mm-hmm. I I can smell. I can smell pretty. What? Yeah, I can smell like. I don't. But you don't smell like that when you get home. Because I chew gum on the way home. Mm. So when I get here, I'm all minty fresh, and maybe you'll kiss me. Nah. Nah. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> You got to be pretty fucked up, though, if you're going to try, like, you're lost and you're like, there's a cop. Let me flag him down. <laughs> yes. Or how about the 15-year-old probably has a phone? That's what I mean. Like She probably knows what's going on, too. Like, 
Whatever. I'd be like, hey, Grandpa, I got my permit. Why don't you just let me drive? Nah. And why are you trying to go to an auto parts store all fucked up? You could try to, to fix your car and have it fall on you later? To do mechanics. Yeah, okay. I'm going to check my battery. Mm-hmm. My battery is about to die. I'm also going to get some propane. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I'm that dude. <laughs> that one? What's his name? Hank Hill. Yeah, that guy. I'm phenomenal. I'm, I'm phenomenal. I'm going to get some propane. Trivia. Oh, Bobby. I'm phenomenal at trivia. Hmm? That wasn't trivia. That was just me having a brain fart. No, I know. But I, I, I do great at trivia, just so you know. I can't think of any trivia questions. <laughs> um, next one I got for you is in Crestview, Florida, mm-hmm. where two Florida men have been charged with using fraudulent and stolen credit cards after pretending to be part of the Wu-Tang Clan. Shut up. <laughs> hey, man, Wu-Tang forever. Wu-Tang forever. Mm-hmm. I try to be part of it. Do their credit cards say just Wu-Tang Clan? <laughs> <laughs> Like one says, first name's Wu, last name's They just got a black Tang. card. They just got a black card with, yeah, with the fucking W, w on it. On it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the other one has full life on it. Oh, shit. Aaron Barnes Burpo. That's terrible. <laughs> He's a hyphen, too. Fucking hyphen. Oh, it. no. Shout out to Riley and him. Aaron Barnes Burpo, 28, and Walker Washington, which is the most gangster name I've ever heard. Walker Washington, 51 years old. Old ass Wu-Tang. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> who is also listed as homeless. Oh, man. Are charged with one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud and aggravated identity theft. The complaint alleges Barnes Burpo and Washington organized a group of men and women who pretended to be with the Rock Nation Production Company and the hip hop group Wu Tang Clan. Okay. So he assembled his own Wu Tang Clan. See, see, this is this is a little <laughs> Call bit. Call the Wu Tang Clan. I think th- th- this is a little bit of uh, uh, racial implications here because this dude was like, "I'm going to parade a group of black folks past these white guys in these random hotels and whatnot, and we're just going to say we're Wu Tang, and they won't know." Because we're just black people, and we're going to dress in black clothings, and we're going to have the fucking logo on and shit, and they're, they're not going to know. They just take, like, yellow paint and make all those shirts. I think they could probably actually buy, like, branded not merchandise. they're homeless. Oh, the one is homeless. The, the old man How is homeless. How is he organizing anything that costs money if he's homeless? He's not doing a good job at fraudulent I activities. I don't know. Uh, it says they use their stolen credit cards to rent luxury limousines, including a Rolls Royce, oh, Jesus. defrauded hotels of thousands of dollars in goods and services in cities including Atlanta, Macon, Georgia, and Nashville. So they're on the move, too. They're touring. Mm-hmm. They're touring. They're doing a, a Southeast tour. Well, that's bad on the hotels for not knowing who Wu-Tang is. Well... The scam unraveled when staff at the Fairfield Inn in Augusta, Georgia, became suspicious and yeah. alerted authorities. Quote, the FBI would like to thank the staff at the Fairfield Inn in Augusta for their awareness that helped end the run of these alleged fraudsters, uh, special agent in charge of FBI Atlanta said. The arrests should serve as a warning that no matter how elaborate your fraud schemes are, the FBI is determined to protect American citizens who fall victim to them. Wu-Tang forever. What if they went up to this hotel desk and they were like, we're Wu-Tang Clan. He pulled down his lip and he's like, yeah, bitch, let me see. And he had like Wu-Tang on You think they're like lip? fucking Wakanda? Yeah, man. They got barcodes and they shit. Wa- fucking Wu-Tang ain't got neon barcodes. I know they in don't. Lip. It was a joke that didn't go right. <laughs> Jesus. Well, FBI ain't nothing to fuck with. You are FBI in my phone. I know, and I don't know why. Makes me upset sometimes. Oh, I'll tell you why. Tell me. Because you, there was a Facebook thing that had, it was like a a picture Mm -hmm. and it said, how do I explain it? It was like a meme or something and it said FBI and it was like, stop what you're doing right now or whatever. And then you're like, look, the FBI. And I'm like, anybody could be the FBI. You could be the FBI. And then I changed your name to FBI on my phone. I don't, I don't get that (laughs) Wait, it said, stop what you're doing to FBI. Yeah, because somebody texted something to somebody about like a conspiracy theory, and then like a message popped up and it said FBI, and it's like, oh, stop see, what you're doing. Yeah, you could have explained that infinitely better. Okay. With the whole text message and the pop up thing. Yeah, you could have way explained yeah, that and better. I'm like, and you're looking at me like I'm stupid. Yeah, well, you are. Well, but I'm like, anybody could be FBI. So I, yeah. That's why I changed your name to FBI. Sweet. Do you want me to change it back to lunch? I'm going to fucking smack the shit out of you. Uh, last one I got is in West Palm Beach, where a Florida man is upset he can't bring his life-size cardboard cutout of President Trump to his dialysis. Why not? He's not hurting anybody. 
A Florida man undergoing kidney dialysis three times a week is upset he can't bring his life-size, car- life-size cardboard cutout of the president for emotional support. Oh, man. just let the- You could bring a fucking ostrich, a dog. Peacock. Peacock. I said ostrich for my own reasons. Uh, for your own reasons. Expo- <laughs> do you care to explain that shitty or do you want to fucking just let that one ride? Ostrich just came into my head. So they have emotional support. I'll just say birds. Is that better? No. Peacock. Birds. Peacock. Cock. Cock. No. <laughs> Dogs I got fucking emotional support. Hamsters, cats, pigeons, whatever. Let the dude bring a cardboard cutout. It's not gonna shit on the floor or mess up anything. Just let him bring it. You just want to see Trump everywhere. Why do you think I love him so much? Because I think I think you do. <laughs> You're always on the defense of the orange man. It's not that I'm on the defense of him. It's just that when our kid says that he doesn't like the president because he he's the one that is responsible for global warming and he's, <laughs> <laughs> he's responsible for global And you literally just said he was smart. <laughs> <laughs> he's impressionable. So he comes home and says he's responsible for global warming. And I'm like, no, everybody is. And then he's like, well, he's ugly. And I'm like, that doesn't have nothing to do with how he runs the country. I'm like, do some fucking research before you start How are you going to tell shit. a 10-year-old to do some fucking research? <laughs> He's listening to all these other people. Oh, Trump's so bad. And I'm like, I'm not saying that you have to like him. I'm just saying form your own opinion. Don't listen to everybody else. He gets caught up in the YouTube algorithms. I think he, he ends up watching videos and shit that could sometimes. Be. I told you about that with the little one, right? Like he was watching some shit. And then mm-hmm. the next thing you know, I look over and it's like almost like a music video, but it's like a horror thing. And yeah, like, he likes scary stuff. Dude, there was a, a grown-ass man dressed in an Easter Bunny costume yeah. chasing the, like, Family. I say not chasing, like, he's, like, walking Lurking. after this, yeah, this fucking girl, and the girl's falling down, like, you know, horror movie style, like, all frantic, and looking up at him crying and shit, and he's got a butcher knife, and there's this weird-ass music playing, mm-hmm. and I'm like, what the fuck are you watching? Yeah, he, st- he shouldn't watch YouTube down here, because like, upstairs I have it filtered, and I also have all his subscribers. Descriptions, oh, that, so he can't watch that stuff upstairs. Oh, that's but probably like why down he here. Wants to watch it's it down not. Here. Yeah, it's not. Yeah, on the per- Xbox. Or yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, I'm sitting there watching it, but I should have shut it off right away, but I wanted to see where it was going, so I sat there and watched it with him. Because I'm and sure by, it's not the first time he watched it. By the end, the girl got away from the guy, and then she flipped the script on him. It showed her with his knife cutting the fucking ears off the rabbit. I'm mm-hmm. like, all right, we enough, dude. Go mm-hmm. upstairs. Go do something else. He watches something else, too, that is a, is a guy dressed like the ventriloquist doll in Toy Story 4. Benson, I think his name was. Mm. And it's just a creepy doll. And it's like these kids making the videos. They're like young adults, maybe in their 20s. They're moved out or whatever. And they have like these toys. How do you know their status? Young adults in their 20s, they've moved out of home. Because I I see. (laughs) I can tell they live on their own. Because when they're talking about Toy Story 4 stuff and they have the toys, you could see the liquor bottles on top of the cabinets for decorations. So I know they're not living at home. That is 20 as fuck. Right. How many empty absolute bottles and shit that we used to have on top of the dresser and whatnot. We used to to use these for decoration too. So it's like, I know. That's 20 as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, You're you're right. You're right. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. So I know that that's what they're doing. But they have all these toys. And I'm like... Don't watch this. Mm-hmm. And then, I mean, they're not bad. It's just fucking. We're weird. bad parents. I mean, we we're we're two hands off. We're bad parents. We just let them watch bunny murder and fucking stick shit up their buttholes. And <laughs> I, 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 when are they going to come and take the kids from us? I mean, we can just take away YouTube. I guess. I mean, like, can we take away buttholes too? I mean, no. <laughs> Dutchy poo. What? A Florida man undergoing kidney dialysis three times right, a week is right. upset. Nelson Gibson said that his family can't sit with him during his three and a half hour treatments. Mm-hmm. To help, he began bringing a picture of President Trump as a comfort item. Okay, okay. started with a picture. Started with a picture. Okay, no biggie. He said no one complained about the photo. Right, because not everybody could see it. Next, he started bringing a small car- cor- uh, small cardboard cutout of himself standing next to a Trump photo. No one complained about the small cutout. And Gibson said that some people even took photos of themselves with it. Okay. Uh, on Saturday, Gibson took a life-size cutout of Trump to his treatment at Friends Kidney Care in Port St. Lucie. Mm-hmm. He said no one again took issue with his new emotional support item. But when he returned on Tuesday for treatment with the presidential cutout, he ran into a roadblock. Quote, they told me it was too much and this isn't a political rally, which I tend to fucking agree. Okay. 
The Gibsons say they feel singled out since the center typically encourages patients to bring emotional support items and said other patients bring in bubble wrap and pop it during their treatment, which he finds nerve-wracking. Hell yeah, dude. I would too. I I would agree with that. Fuck that. What I would really like to have happen is for them not to infringe upon my father's freedom and expression of, of expression and speech allow him to bring life size who the fuck is speaking right now jesus christ allow him to bring in the life size cutout if it takes up less service area than a garbage can his son eric told local news Mm -hmm. while we can't discuss any specific individual we strongly uh, support the ability of all our patients to express their views which includes bringing reasonably sized items into our centers that do not create safety or infection control issues and interfere with caregivers blah 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 spokesman said statement they aren't sure if they're going to return to the place i am all about free speech but this isn't a private setting and i agree with the place it's not a fucking political rally you can't come in with a cardboard fucking thing but you know like fucking woo-hoo, woo-hoo. i think you're staging a fucking rally i think that if people didn't take pictures of him themselves with the smaller one then he wouldn't have brought a bigger one yeah because why is he pushing the envelope Mm-hmm. You know, I, you're bringing the picture to begin with, and that's your your thing. And then you're like, oh, I got away with that. Nobody cared. So I'm going to up it a little bit, and I'm going to up it. And I would stair step it all the way up yeah, until you people... get to this thing that becomes a big fucking thing. And then when someone makes a stink, you're like, how dare you infringe upon no, my rights? I, well, the people made a big deal about it when they were taking pictures. So he's like, oh, if they like this, then they're going to love this. So I think that he did it for a little bit of attention. Of course. But, of course you did. Uh, if it wasn't for the other people making a big deal out of it, he probably would have just been fine with a smaller one. I think it's fucking stupid at any rate. I don't think that you should be able to bring bubble wrap either. No, I mean, all of that shit, dude. I mean, like, we've gotten so spun far out of control with what we're going to allow people to do, you know, under mm-hmm. the guise of, you know, emotional support and shit like that. I mean, fucking get over it. Well, it's like if you really want to see Trump that bad, just download some videos of his speeches or something and watch it. I'm sure they all take 3 hours. <laughs> you know. Read read his Twitter while you're there. Yeah, exactly. Get a good laugh. Um, let's take a hot break real quick. Good. Get rid of this shit. Get rid of that footy wine. Yeah, it's nasty. After these messages, we'll be right back. Bobby, how would you describe our podcast? Uh, pretty much two sexy motherfuckers doing cool shit on the internet. By cool shit, do you mean telling dick jokes and yelling about sports? So, yo, and there's WNBA stars that look kind of good though. Why are you looking okay, your lips like that? Okay, okay. see, though. I'm trying to listen. I just want to know. Why? I got a question. What? They shoot the three? So, or is it like just fundamentals? I can watch your nephew do it, or your nephew can dunk though, huh? Oh my god! I'm just saying. I'm just saying, dude. I can see a bunch of fucking short white dudes over at the YMCA play fucking fundamental basketball. All right? Yeah, they shoot the fucking J and they drive the lane and dunk it or what? You know what? <clears throat> nah, man. We yell about all types of shit, bro. I'm not sticking nothing in your butthole. Not one finger not in the booty? sticking nothing's a double negative. So you're ratting so you, on yourself. What are you sticking? I'm, you know who's ratting on you? Who? Yourself. Self. <laughs> God damn, self. <laughs> I drink mad Never milk. not once. I drink you never drove milk. the bus. Never drove the bus. Not once. You, you. Okay, you know what? You know what? Ha- you know what? I tried. Hashtag Sam PC. You already know, man. Go to SimsandMore.com. Go check out all our content. Go check all our episodes out, man. Like us. Rate us. Grab your best friend's phone. Put us on his phone. Get your grandmother's phone. Put us on her phone. Then get your baby sister's phone. And her baby daddy's phone. And put us on their phone. Holla at us, man. Hashtag Sam PC. Simmons and More Podcast. Absolutely everywhere that you can hear this podcast that you're listening to. Right now, you can find us. Hashtag Sam PC. Yep. Uh, follow Simmons and More Podcast on Facebook, Twitter. Instagram. Instagram. Uh, Live Journal. Grinder. We're everywhere. Everywhere you want to be. Uh, also, go to sampc.bigcartel and buy some motherfucking t-shirts. Yeah, man. Merch on Deckington. So go cop that for us, brother, please. Hashtag Sam PC. You already know. Peace. Hey, everybody. I'm Mikey T. And I'm Paranormal Fuckboy. And this is One Armed Ninja. And we are failing Hollywood. You are listening to the Hashtag No Offense Show. I thought it was HT Nas. Is that some shirt of ointment? No, it's the, it's the same show. Eight. A- Hashtag H Whatever uh, Listen to hashtag No offense You're pointing to a goddamn pound sign yeah. HD Nas isn't about Japanese custom cars no. It sounds like Some sort of rapper From the south <laughs> On the Inner Circle Podcast Network Yeah We're back 
I ditched that nasty sherry one that got me a social light, which is something that's new for your company, right? Yes, the fine folks at Social Light presented to us at work this week and uh, made some samples provided to us for your uh, Dutchy Poo to try. I say Dutchy Poo because it's uh, kind of like White Claw and mm -hmm. I, uh, it's not my jam. I, I'm not it's a seltzer. Vodka soda. This one's pineapple mango. It's only 80 calories, where truly is 100. Yeah, and that's where they're coming in because it's not, it's a seltzer like, but it's vodka based, so it's not seltzer per se. It's, it's Oh, that's really good. Well, there you have it. Here, you should try it. It's, I've tried it at the meeting. Have you? Okay. I tried it at the meeting. It's not. It doesn't have as many bubbles in it, so it's, it's not, not as not sharp. Jam. It's just not as sharp. It's, it's really good. It's for, it's for the ladies. It looks very sexy in your hand. It's uh, oh yeah, your social light. So I mean, if, the name's kind of weird, but it's a weird it's, weird name. I mean, it's trend. It's a trendy because when you're a social light, you're like an influencer. You're one yep. of those richie kids. Yup. So and that's who they're marketing to. And Kegel, Keenan Michael Key isn't branding it. He does the Trulies. Does he? Mm -hmm. No shit, really? You've never seen that commercial? No. I don't like, watch enough TV to fucking catch oh those commercials. Oh my gosh, it's funny. But yeah, that's, if you like if you like the White Claws and the Trulies and that, keep an eye out for these social lights, uh, especially if you're in the Bay Area with us here in Tampa. They're mm -hmm. going uh, to be everywhere soon. They're better than Trulies. And they're not, like the Trulies have an aftertaste of like that fake sugar flavor. Not anymore. Oh. You're remembering the launch Trulies. Okay. I guess I, guess I got to bring you new, new samples. Yeah, right. Um, but with, this doesn't have a lingering, like, sugar aftertaste, like, artificial sweetener. No. I really like it. The New Belgium folks uh, have a, were also in work and provided me with some Voodoo Ranger American Haze. And uh, I I'll, I love it when New Belgium comes to work because yeah. they're one of my favorite breweries. And the, uh, the, the Voodoo Ranger series is a rotating thing. And... Um, they're they're always good. I'm always excited to to get these. This is the American Haze uh, IPA, and it's yeah. it's juicy, fucking dope. The juicy haze is your favorite. It's my favorite beer, like across the board. Like yeah. I love it. I mm -hmm. love it. Well, good. Mm. So coming back here on the back half, um, did you notice I asked for questions this week? Yeah. Oh, on can social, I tell a story? Social media. Can I tell a story about my work real quick? You have a work story. Yeah. Is it related to a question? Mm, I don't know what the questions are. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. But I thought it was really it's funny and gross. We have we have food trucks that come to the to our work once a week. Yeah. And this last one that came, it was called Grilling Me Softly. Oh, that's a killer name. Yeah, and I thought it was grilled cheese. What kind? What kind of what kind of food they got? It's like hibachi. Oh, that's a hibachi a, that's style. That's a dope ass name. Right, because it's killing me softly. Yeah, yeah, I, but it's I, I grilling get it. me softly. I get, I get it. Okay. I get it. So I normally get the food trucks, but I'm trying to be better. So I cook some Italian sausage and I eat that. Everybody, it's much better. <laughs> well, I just had the link. I didn't eat like rice or bread. Okay. So okay. Hey, sh hey, shout out to you for making little decisions. I'm okay? trying. Hey, shout out to you. I haven't gained any weight. I just need to lose more. <laughs> well, I'm still at my um, slimmer circle weight. Are you? Yeah. That was a long time ago. So I know. So I'm stable, yeah, but you're maintaining. You're maintaining. Okay? I know, but I want to get. Less. Hey, don't I we want all? To lose. Don't we all? Okay. So everybody that ate at this food truck got sick. Mm. There were people throwing up in their garbage what? cans at their desk. People had diarrhea. No. And it just came out of nowhere. Like one minute they were sitting at their desk, and the next minute they were puking in their garbage cans. So it was like that scene in Stand by Me at the fucking blueberry pie eating contest. Oh yeah. And shit, where everyone was just barfing on each other. Oh man. It, I mean, oh, did no barf no. made it on the floor or anything. <sighs> Dude, but why did you ruin it? That had such a good name. Sorry. And they sucked. Oh, no one's ever going to eat there now. Oh, you're putting them on blast on the fucking show I know, even, don't, too? Don't, oh, eat, no. don't eat from that food truck. But they're one of the ladies that had gotten... There was two people that didn't get sick. My yeah. boss, Wes, and this lady, Susie. I'm like, did they got, eat there? Yeah. Oh, and they, and they just, had a couple things that other people ate that they got sick off of. You know why? Hmm. They either are... They either are the ones that were vaccinated and the other people aren't. <laughs> they or or they have the coronavirus. Maybe. Those two have the coronavirus, so little fucking food poisoning ain't going to hurt them. Mm -hmm. Or they are they carry the the zombie gene and they're going to be the first people to turn in the apocalypse. Maybe. Could be any of those things. I lean towards the latter. But Susie was saying that there was only one guy in the truck and he was wearing gloves, but he was putting like raw chicken on the um, 
on the grill with the cooked chicken already. He was taking money and running credit cards with the same gloves like the whole time. So I think there was just like cross contamination Jesus going on or something. Christ. Come on. But man. I'm like I'm like I usually do get the food trucks cuz I like to try them, but I'm so glad I didn't get that food truck. Uh, my favorite is still smoking bowls. Still the OG. For, I mean, like wing box is real good too. If, if you listen to the early days of the hashtag No Offense Show, man, we used to be on smoking bowls like all the fucking time, dude. Well, then shout I like out to Churro Blunts and them. If I still drove by Four Stacks when I come home, sometimes I'll like on Tuesdays or whatever, I'll see what the food truck is because there's always one out there. Yeah, oh, I that's how I got in an silly. accident that time. Oh yeah, because you were looking to see. Yeah, and then I look back and there's fucking brake lights, and I'm like, oh mm-hmm. shit. <laughs> that Surly Mermaid's there a lot. Yeah, I see that dude riding around a lot. He's—I mm-hmm. think he lives in the area. I see his truck on the road a lot. Uh, that's unfortunate. That fucking sucks. yeah, because I'll never eat there, and I love hibachi. Well, and I like to support, like you, I like to support the trucks and that because that's just dudes out there trying to fucking get their hustle on and whatnot. And I don't know if somebody, maybe somebody called in sick or somebody was sick and they contaminated something. I don't know. I don't. Ugh, that's... It was just gross. And then my boss was like, he saw the because he's in his office, so he just saw people barfing in there. That's so garbage sick, can. dude. At the desk, you couldn't even make it to the. Fu- oh my god, that's so sick. Because mm-hmm. you got if you can't make it, like if you feel like you're gonna throw up and you can't make it to like get up and go to the bathroom, that's gonna be projectile. That's not just going to be a throw up. That's going to be like a fucking exorcist. Yeah. Like a... Yeah, he was like legit throwing up in his car. I was like, man, I hope we took the bag out. Fuck To the dumpster. Off. Yeah, fuck that, dude. Ugh, I would have went home. I couldn't have stayed in Oh, yeah, office. they all went home. No, if I'm you. Oh. I, and everyone's I throwing up around me. Any... Dude, no, I couldn't have stayed. Knowing that it happened. I didn't see anything. I would have... Knowing that it happened. I, well, I went to my car for something... And I came, or maybe I went to the bathroom and I came back and I heard people talking about, oh, did you get the chicken or this? Because I didn't feel so good. And then all of a sudden everybody's like, oh yeah, she's got the shits and this one's throwing up in the bathroom. Dawson's throwing up at his desk. And oh, I'm like, oh my God. I love how you name names too. Who cares? Oh, I'm sure Nelson does. <laughs> he don't listen. <laughs> he might. <laughs> He's from Boston. Well, you know what? We have people in Boston. Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah, so... We used to do a lot of, you know, almost on a weekly basis, I used to throw out the questions or uh, mm-hmm. subjects or whatever, you know, posted. Then I just, I kind of fell out of the habit. I stopped doing it. and Because we weren't getting questions. Not a lot. Not a lot. Mm-hmm. But I mean, some of the better memories that I have have come from that. So sure. I said, fuck it, dude. I'll throw it out. We'll see what happens. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. And we, we got quite a bit. We got quite a bit of interaction. So I'm going to get into that now. Okay. Um, first one is from your boyfriend, Riley. And uh, Riley from the Plunge Podcast wants to know, can a bread bowl get soggy? I think it depends on the kind of bread and the kind of soup. I like how you didn't even hesitate and you just answer it where I read that. And I'm like, what kind of fucking idiot are you, Riley? <laughs> like, for real? For real. Mm-hmm. That's you, you, that's what you come in with. You got to use a sourdough bread bowl because it's a hearty bread. If you put a cream soup in there, I feel like it's not as liquidy even though it's liquid. So it doesn't penetrate the inside as much as like say a chicken noodle would. Because it's mainly broth and not cream. So I feel it depends on the soup, Mr. Riley. Mr. Hyphen. You know what I thought of when I read this? Um, when I was in high school, we used to hang. Remember that restaurant, Venice? Oh, hell yeah. Lemon rice soup. I, I, we used All to, day. We used to hang there. We used to go there because we had nowhere else to go. We'd and go they there had and Deer Hunter. We could smoke in there. And oh, shit. Back then you couldn't. I mean, but it was starting to get to where. I mean, we're going back to the 90s and shit where you right. can still smoke indoors. But not I a lot of places. I didn't know you when you smoked. You did because you made me quit. Well, you didn't make me quit, but you told me in a very direct way that you didn't like it. So I was I like, did. hey, if you don't like it, I fucking hate it. So <laughs> get out of here. Um, but yeah, we used to go there and we would sit there and smoke and talk and shit. And we were poor, so we would always get fucking bo- a bowl of soup. And they'd bring us out a big-ass basket of bread. Mm-hmm. And they had a variety of rolls. And there was one that was a sturdy fucking roll. And I would hollow that bitch out at the table and fucking put my soup in there. Oh, yeah, dude. I love that shit. Sit there fucking smoking cigarettes and being That's stupid, crazy. being sixteen as fuck at you know midnight, thinking you're badass and mm-hmm. shit. You know how it is. I never did anything like that. Why? I wasn't allowed to. You weren't allowed to be badass, dude. My dad is that why you're so badass now? My dad wouldn't even allow me to go to the movies with my friends. You're so fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> like I remember my boyfriend at the time. He wanted to go see the to the movies, and it was like a weeknight or something. It was like a Tuesday or Wednesday. It was the drive-in. And I wasn't allowed to go because it was a school night. 
Dog. I was thinking about the drive-in lately too, because the last movie that I saw at the drive-in, you know, drive-ins are double features and shit. Mm -hmm. Last time I was at the drive-in was The Matrix 1 and Austin Powers 2 on a double feature. Wow. What year do you think that was? 97, 98? Something like that. I can't even remember the last time I was at a drive-in. I was a kid. I wanted to go tonight. I I told you I wanted to go tonight because we got a drive-in in in town right there. Mm -hmm. And, uh... It's the latest Star Wars, you know, Rise of Skywalker and uh, Sonic the Hedgehog. And I was going to yeah, take the fucking the boys. the kids want to see Sonic. Yeah, but I mean, it was rainy tonight and it's Valentine's Day and shit. And, mm-hmm. and fuck, fuck I don't know if, like, if we had a we truck. We already seen Star Wars, too. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's, but it's $6 for two movies. I mean, come on, man. Right. If we had a truck or something that was more driving friendly, I'd be all up for it. But you can't really watch. I was going to say we both drive and take two cars and put them side by side. And then we could just, like, you know, fucking have both cars to so one of the kids could sit in the front seat or something because i think a lot of them uh when we used to go we'd have chairs and stuff and we'd sit outside the car we i had a truck you forget that back when i know you did i was with you yeah i had my pickup so and you had a couch back there well no i had the the top off i had the hard top off in the summertime so Mm -hmm. we used to just put lawn chairs and shit in the back or you know i'd have a couple of blankets and we'd just chill in the fucking back and watch i want a jeep yeah, well, it's coming, all right? It's, it's fucking coming. Now, if we get this house... We'll figure out what we want. Do I want to be butt naked in a pool, or do I want you to be able to drive in a fucking Jeep? We could do both. It just depends. Okay. I really want to be butt naked in a pool. I know. I think that'd be awesome. Um, but the more expensive houses also have hot tubs, and I also want one of those. I for sure want one of those, because <laughs> like, I, I made it back to the gym for the first time since my birthday this week, and my legs are fucking like... Still fucked up. Like yeah. I, I think I pulled something in my in my in my. We leg, just gotta we just gotta region. either find something cheaper we could put it in ourselves, or we have to get something expensive that we're already paying for it. Yeah, well, so that's gonna be hard. We get to go house looking tomorrow. Yay! Mm-hmm. Adult shit on a Saturday. I know I like it, and I'm excited, but at the same time, I really don't want to get my hopes up because I wanna. I don't know if we're gonna be able to list. I'll list these nuts. We'll see. Um, our friend Adam at the Simmons and More podcast. Uh, I tried to read that. There it's a whole so thing. many words. It's a whole ass thing. Okay, <laughs> so the question is, at what point into a relationship do you fart in front of the other person? Mm-hmm. Okay, so I mean, it's Valentine's Day. That's a, that's a legit question. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then he goes on to say, we here at the law offices of Simmons and More. Dun, dun, dun. I, he would like me to insert that right there, that mm-hmm. sound effect. So in post-production, I will insert the... <laughs> And then we will say the law offices of Simmons and Moore, and and then we will add all that in in post. Sorry that I ruined everything. No, I'm, it's going to be funny, and now you just made it unfunny. Edit. <laughs> uh, we here at the law offices of Simmons and Moore feel obliged to indoctrinate any possible suitors and the currently betrothed or wed into the noxious digestive woes that we experience daily. Your rebuttal, please, Duchess. So this is actually directed squarely toward you. Well, I got to say that I flatulate probably just as much as any dude would flatulate. How Do you remember how long it was before you didn't care if I was around? I still care... If you were around, I try not to make it. I appreciate your efforts. You know, but like the other night I ate something that was just like, I don't know what it was. And I was like, my stomach was a mess and I was sitting on the couch with you and you were so nice because I really couldn't smell anything. Yeah. You straight up smelled like a sewer. <laughs> you, you had sewer, sewage coming out of you. You you straight up smelled like Michelangelo's bedroom and you're just sitting over there all fucking nonchalant. And I'm, afterwards. I couldn't smell anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You smelled like all fucking, all four of the Ninja Turtles. Oh, my. And, and, and. I didn't say nothing because you know what? I love you and whatever. I mean, it's, I it's not a big deal where I told you after the fact, I was like, if that was you and situation was reversed and I was the one that smelled like the fucking Ninja Turtles, you would have been like, oh my God, you're so gross. Why are you sitting here and you're next to me? Why don't you leave the room? Oh my God, I can't believe you would do that to me. This is so disgusting. <laughs> That would be oh you. Oh my gosh. That would be no. you. Yes, it would. You, you would be throwing so... a fit in a fucking half. No, that's half. not yes, true. Yes, you would too. If I smelled, I'm really bad because I'm like, did you fart? And then you get so mad. You're like, what? No. Why would you ask me that? That's so rude. Yeah, well, you got the kids doing it now, dude. I told you. Every time I drive by the fucking weed store and shit and Lucas smells the fucking good good. He's like, man, who farted? Dad, did you fart? Like, Just like your fucking mom, dude. Yeah, but I couldn't smell anything. I don't know what was going on. Every time I burped, it smelled like sulfur. Like, there was something was fucked. 
up. So yeah. thanks for being a good sport. And then I was up all night in the bathroom. So do you, I? I remember. I was due to all the bad out. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Shout out to last week. Um, I, I I read this and I I was thinking about it because I, I'm the same way. I try to. It's not that I won't do it around you. I mm-hmm. just try to not do it around you because I mean, like, there's certain things I just you know I would rather if I not think fucking it's do not around gonna you. Smell, I will, or not make a noise. But well, sometimes I do it on accident because I'm not as tight as I used to be. Ooh. God damn. <laughs> um, do you remember my first apartment, how we used to have those parties that would spill out into the courtyard? Yeah. You know, like there were the two buildings and then in the middle there was that grassy area where like everyone would just be, you know, fucking out on the lawn or whatever. Right. And oh. we were wrestling mm-hmm. when you you first started coming around and like I was a stupid <laughs> kid and I didn't know how to tell you that I liked you. So it's like, hey, I'm going to hit the girl that I like, you know, and mm-hmm. we're messing around and wrestling and roughhousing mm-hmm. and shit. I fucking farted on you right yes, then in the you grass. Did. And, and you then, were so embarrassed. I played it off too. I was like, I didn't do nothing. Yeah, because there were so knew. many other people. And of every, course every, I knew. Everybody knew. Everybody knew. But I don't know. It just, I thought, I'm a grown ass woman and I think farts are funny. <laughs> They'll always be funny. <laughs> Yeah, you fought it. But, Who fought it? Buttholes in them, dude. I mean, it's just funny stuff. Shout out to anal <laughs> <laughs> and basketball. <laughs> um, so somebody named Alex uh, sent this in via htnos.com mm-hmm. and asked, "Who does our intro music?" Which oh. is, I mean, is a good question. Mm-hmm. I used to, I used to have it in the uh, the the show notes or whatever, but I had taken it out at one point or another uh, because I think they broke up. I don't even oh, know if okay. they're still a band anymore or whatever. But the band that does our intro music is called Alaya, and it you is have to uh, spell it. It's it, well, it's, it's just like it sounds: A L A Y A. Oh, okay. Alaya. Uh, they're on Spotify. I mean, even if they did broke break up, you can find their album on Spotify, which is pretty fucking good too. I, I like it. Um, it's our friend from back in that time frame, mm-hmm. uh, Dave, that, um, he is like a monster on the drums. Yeah. He used to be in, uh, just Drop about every one. band. No, he was never in Drop the One. Uh, what was the big band that he was in? Summer that? League. Summer League. So he was in, um, he was in just about every band that we, we fucked with back then. And, um, he, best, best drummer ever. I was like, I compare him to the drummer in the Who. Like the Who drummer, he put he hits notes you don't even know he's hitting. Dude, I don't know if we were together at the point at this point. I don't think we were. He tried to give me drum lessons. Did you know that? I know that he does. He used to teach drum lessons. Yeah. Well, I went to his house and he tried to give me drum lessons, and I made it through two fucking lessons because I was like. I know that I can't do what you do, and you're trying to dumb yourself down to to, to show me, and I'm just never gonna get it. The so best, let's just pull the plug now. The best you'll ever be is rock band drums. And I'm I'm a phenomenal medium skill drummer on rock medium. Band. Yeah, you mm-hmm. go to hard and it gets at a double bass pedal and shit. I'm all fucked, but you know I'm I'm extra great at medium, mm-hmm. which I mean is kind of just like my whole personality. Like I'm very medium. Okay. Right. I'm expert. <sighs> <laughs> Let me tell you. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to put you on blast a little okay. bit. Okay. When we used to have consistent rock band parties and we would fill our house with people that were wanting to play and they were wanting to do rock band and that and you would insist on playing on expert but then fuck up the song so that when everyone was singing and shit we'd hear cuz you were missing I, your fucking keys and shit. I would only shit. play on expert on the songs that I thought we that were I so that I we through. all were so annoyed at you. I just no. want nobody ever would tell you because I mean you're such a sweetheart and everybody loves you, but no one would ever tell you that we were all so fucking annoyed. It's not like because what are you trying to prove? It's a plastic fucking guitar and it's a group of your friends and you're trying to prove how superior you are no, at the play school I wasn't instruments. Doing that, but some songs that the slow songs, the hard levels boring. It's like playing bass on easy. It's just like you're <laughs> waiting for the. The little dot to come up, it doesn't come up. So this, on the songs dude, that were slower, I thought I would try expert. This conversation is relatable to such a small percentage of people. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Shout out to Rock Band, I know. But yeah, if uh, I don't, I haven't even talked to Dave. The last time I talked to Dave was three years ago when we were starting the podcast. And I was like, hey, dude, I'm starting a podcast. Do you mind if I use some of your music for the intro? And he was like, yeah, whatever, man. 
Hope everything's going good. And that was the first time I talked to him in like 10 fucking mm-hmm. years. I don't, I, I mean, I don't really speak to him anymore. You know I mean? We just grew up and grew apart, but, uh, That's what happens, it, unfortunately. it's a, a, it's a good band. Uh, if you want to check them out, I don't know if they're still doing anything, well, but they're on Spotify. So. That was one of the cool things when we did move back up to Chicago is we got to hook up with a lot of people that we used to hang out with when we were kids. Yeah. Like we went over to Perkins's and saw that he was like a great chef at this like I awesome hotel. I completely forgot about we that. We went to the pig roast. And- let's hold on. Let's just explain that for an, an, a, a second. When when I was nineteen, I had my own apartment, mm-hmm. and we still chose to drive twenty minutes to the neighboring town to go to a kid's house who still lived with his parents and party in his bedroom because it was fucking cooler than my apartment. <laughs> But I mean, to be fair, his house was big and he had like the hole upstairs. So this kid's house, we we just used to walk in. And when you walk into this kid's house, his dad would be sitting in a recliner mm-hmm. in a dark room watching the White Sox game. So at, at literally every single time, I don't know baseball like that, but do they play that many fucking games yes. like that every single time we can come over to his house? The motherfucker's yes. watching the goddamn White Sox. They play like every day. It's a dark room and all you see is the glow of the TV and this mm-hmm. motherfucker that I think he was just drunk. He was just comatose. I don't know his name. I never knew never his name. Never fucking knew nope. his name. Never said hi to nobody. Nope. Nope. And I don't even know what his mom looks uh, like. I wouldn't yeah. even know if she was in this room with me right now. I spoke now. to her once because I was doing something in the kitchen. Why the fuck were you downstairs? You that was going to say you come open the door and you go straight upstairs. You don't do anything. You don't you look down, you don't fucking say anything to I anyone. I don't remember why I was in the kitchen. I might have been with another girl that was in the room for I think I was helping her with something. Those were the it best nights. It might have been nights. Brian's girlfriend at the time. Dude, those were the best nights when random girls would just show up in mm-hmm. that that fucking Old thing. Piss mouth. <laughs> You always do that to me. Sorry. I don't know why you Squirrel. do that to me. Well, and another cool thing about him was his parents owned a seafood store, so we'd go. Yeah, the mother, the same motherfucker that was sitting in the goddamn thing all comatose and shit ran his own goddamn business at the fucking meat, uh, fish market and so shit. So once in a while we go sneak in the back and then we get like some ahi tuna steaks. He used to cut up some good ass fucking fillets and shit and mm-hmm. send them home with me. Brian was a good dude. And it, it's funny, like you said, them, you know, all these years later we go back to Chicago and we turn up and the motherfucker's like an executive chef at yeah. some fucking fancy hotel down downtown i'm like wow you got a pregnant you really girlfriend did or wife man. Or was he married i don't remember but his girlfriend or wife was pregnant yeah it was really it was really cool almost almost surreal mm-hmm. you know but yeah i don't even know where uh where we were well dave was, we in, a, there, dave was we in a bunch of bands right, oh, right right that whole time period yeah which it kind of ties into the next question that i have mm-hmm. um this was asked uh, in person, verbally, over Xbox, playing Grand Theft Auto with uh, neighbor DJ, DJ Check from the, the, the Untrained Eye. Uh, he asked me last night, um, he said, you've alluded to it many times, uh, but you've never actually told the story, at least that I can remember. What is the origin of this record label you used to do? Well, it's the second record label? Yes. Mm-hmm. So, Brooke referenced it during the roast of Jason Almy and called me a rapper. Yes. She Which mistaked is, you for Joby. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I don't think she did. I just think she heard the record label thing and it just assumed that oh. the record label equates to rapper. You know, especially in fucking overweight white guys or whatever. Sure, that, I mean, Em's not fat. That was not the. <laughs> That was not the case, though. During the same time period that we're referencing now, the the late teens, early twenties, we um, we we decided we were going to do a record label because our friends, like like Dave from the the you know band we were just talking Summer about, League. he was in a lot of bands, and we were always around live music, and we were in that like emo punk. Dude, your dad was my favorite. He, I loved your dad. So here's the progression of his bands, mm-hmm. r- real quick. Um, he was in a band called the Summer League, which is like you know, the Sunny Emo, Day Real Estate, yeah. you know, typical. Like that was the one that they were trying. They were mm-hmm. trying to make it. Like that was their garage band, you know. Like they put off the effort. And then as he got older and realized that wasn't probably going to happen, he just started playing in bands that like he enjoyed. He a drummer, or that, that he enjoyed. So he when he we had this one spot that all the bands played at the live shows. It was called Sputniks, mm-hmm. and the owner of Sputniks. And the best way I could describe him, he looked Tom like Petty. he looked like Tom Petty, and he had stories about being in California and like the music industry in the seventies and shit. Shoes. The motherfucker was he was he was decked out. He was cool as fuck. Yeah, he was. And started a band called Your Dad. <laughs> and I wish I still had that four four song CD that they did, man. We might. We've got six boxes of them in the garage. 
Yeah, I don't. I don't know if any of your dads in there, but if it is, I'm gonna bust that shit out because this it's good. It's pretty pretty fucking cool. Pretty fucking cool. But then, like, as Dave started doing uh, like acid and more drugs and shit, Mm -hmm. then he got in. Remember King Video? We were gonna we were gonna put that CD out. Lived, yeah. King Video was like basically like Radiohead. It was just a lot of like fucking spacey Mm -hmm. guitars. (laughs) Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Fucking very little vocals, but um, yeah. So. The whole thing with the with the music started because I we were around it and I wanted to be into it. Like I said, I tried to get Dave to teach me how to play drums and I wasn't musically inclined. So my way to be around it was that. I was yeah. going to say, you know, like maybe Either I could facilitate or... a way to put out your stuff and mm-hmm. support you guys that way because I can't I can't do it. And then I could still have a reason to be around. I'm mean, it's not like a groupie that's fucking hanging around at backstage and shit, you know. So it started out where I planned um, a concert, a fundraiser concert for the high school theater club that year Mm -hmm. and met bands that way that I didn't know. And then just said, because at 19, what do you fucking know about you're going to do a record label? You just said, basically, I decided to be a record label. Right. You know, no, just, hey, today, plant my flag. That's all. That's all it is. I'm doing it. Right. And we, it was, it was, I want to say short lived, but it was a couple of years. I mean, like we did a couple of, we did a couple of CDs. We worked with a few bands, um, never really got any traction locally. Uh, that we, was Lucky Gator, right? You're talking about Lucky Gator. That was, that was the first one that was short lived because, um, the girl I was dating at the time decided she was going to dump me for the mm-hmm. guy I was doing it with, mm-hmm. which kind of made it awkward. So we stopped, yeah. but then maybe four months later, I started up with Dave. Okay. Me and me, and it's kind of like it's very parallel to podcast. Around, I wasn't around then. You weren't there for the start, right? Um, it's very parallel to podcast though, because it's like me and Dave are sitting around fucking getting drunk or getting high or whatever, and it's like, hey man, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring the record label back. Well, I want to do it with you, and then never did anything. Right. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I, I was fucking say, doing it all. I don't want to say it's easier now, but there's a lot more platforms where you could. I'm so glad it didn't take off because I don't know what the what I would have did when the music industry changed and went to completely streaming and yeah. you know like where can you even buy a CD now like mm-hmm. you know you have to do it online if you're a super fan maybe but like Walmart. it's it's not the same fucking world anymore and I don't know that I would have been ready for that you know mm-hmm. I was barely ready for it when we were doing it because I mean like to do a small run of like a thousand CDs for a band I mean that was almost two thousand dollars and, and you we're had talking to front about the money yeah. We're talking about 19 years old, 20 years old, where I'm working at Pizza Hut delivering fucking pizzas and shit. You were at uh, Funkoland at that time. After the fact, but I mean, like, this was all, you know, happening during that same time. It's very expensive, and especially when you don't know what you're doing. But I mean, like, we made friends in Milwaukee, and Mm -hmm. one of our bands was from Milwaukee, so we did a lot of trips up there, you know, just to promote and for releases and stuff. And I mean, it was fucking dope. They were our our main band. uh, Twin Star. called Twin Star and I still communicate with the singer from time to time now via social media he's got his own podcast uh, where he interviews very famous musicians and I'm glad that that worked out for him you know if you check out the Vinyl Emergency Podcast if you're into that kind of thing he's doing well for himself you know and we became friends and you know that was because of that it was that's what I mean it's kind of very similar to what we're doing now I had a lot of fun when I was around cause I'd be the one working the merch table you did I got pictures of you slinging t-shirts and fucking CDs. Wisconsin yeah <laughs> I loved it it was great I had a lot of fun and that was that's how um we had a cat named Jet and the Jet second Black cat. the second record label was Jet Black Records Jet Black Records was uh was the deal and that was a cool logo and stuff, too. But I remember, because I used to work at PetSmart, I brought home animals all the time. Yeah. This little black cat was under my car, so I brought him in with me, and I brought him home, and I'm like... Her. I brought her home, and I'm like, I'm just going to keep her until we find a home. And you're like, yeah, the fuck right. We can keep her. We just got to name her Jet. Yeah, that was my girl, man. She was the mascot. Jet Black Records, Jet Black Cat. She used to sleep in a Budweiser box. She mm-hmm. was she was the fucking... She was the shit, She's dude. a good cat. But yeah, that was that was a, a very short lived time, and a very, but I mean, it was fun. It, it kept us around all our friends. It kept us relevant in the music uh, scene that you know, like we loved. I still listen to all that music. Well, now, it was cool because know? even though it was a small label, you'd still get demos in the mail sometimes. It's my biggest claim to fame. 
I know. The the biggest thing that I did as that record label was get a fucking demo in the mail in a fucking nondescript yellow envelope in the year 2000 from a little band in Chicago called Fallout Boy, and I opened it up and put it in my truck while I was delivering pizzas that night and was like, this fucking sucks. <laughs> right. I'm never going to do anything with them. Fuck off. Mm-hmm. And two years later, they're on MTV talking about I'm going down in the earlier round, sugar, I'm going down swinging, and I could have been fucking millionaire. Yeah, well, I don't know about all that, but... It would have at least been on the right path. It could have <laughs> did, did me something rather than Somebody saying... discovered him. But you know what? Hey, I got fucking integrity. I wasn't into it, so fuck off. Mm-hmm. And Pete Wentz still sucks dick, so whatever. And, yes, and Ashley Simpson's clitoris. Yeah, which is an <laughs> undersized dick. <laughs> yes. The one that I regretted not being able to do because we burned out. We moved to Florida. That's why we stopped doing it. Do you remember that? I thought it was because we didn't have any money. Well, that it was getting to that point where we were running out of money and we moved here at the same time, kind of. Mm-hmm. And I never really like stopped. I never really like said, okay, we're done. You know, like I, we just moved here and I just kind of just pulled the plug i never told anyone really and i regretted the way i handled that you know and i when we well, did move it's back not like we had contracts with anybody no but i mean like i we mean we weren't just, selling the cds that we made i still got a box in the fucking garage that you're trying to get me to throw out anybody wants a twin star cd fucking hit me up I'll, <laughs> I'll send it out to you just pay for shipping the one i regret not being able to do though is low birth weight yeah because well, we were starting to like they were in the studio when we were at the end and it never came to fruition and I loved them. Well, the other one that I thought would have been cool would be was going to be that Jawbreaker tribute where you're trying to get other bands to do Jawbreaker songs. Yeah. And that... I remember you hit a Belkline Trio and they're like you got to pay us and you're like what fuck that. <laughs> no, he never asked for money. Oh, I thought you said they had that we had to pay him like 200 bucks or something. No, he never asked for money. Some bands did. Oh, okay. The they Ata- weren't one of them? Chris from the Ataris asked me for money. Oh, wow. And I was like, no, nah, that's not happening. No. Dude. No, Skiba was cool as fuck. Oh, okay. And which was another cool thing, man. I got to meet a lot of the people that I was idolizing at that time. You know, a lot of the the, the records that I was spinning, I, I was talking to those guys. And I mean, way back in the early days of the internet where I'm talking AIM, you know, like we're text yeah. messaging through, you know, AIM and shit back and forth and it was fucking dope you know i, I loved mm-hmm. it but low birth weight was that would have been the one i thought i think that would have been the one to pop just was never meant to be yeah it's all right it was a good time it was a good time and um but I, a lot of it was the apprehension to do this was because of the way that ended you know like I got to make a lot of things right when we moved back to Chicago, you know, like mm-hmm. I, I got to, to write a few checks to a few people that I, I wronged on money and I got to oh, yeah. tie up a few loose ends on, on things, you know, and it felt good to, to, to put all that to bed. But like when I, we got back to Florida and, and old carp was like, Hey, I want to do a podcast. I couldn't say fuck off quick enough. Like, I didn't want to do that. Like, mm-hmm. I wasn't prepared to put myself out there again to try to get back in the public light to, you know, one, but I didn't want to be different. That's well, different one, than they are. One, I didn't want to be remembered. I didn't want anyone that I used to deal with back in the day to come back now. And, you know, like you act like you like fucked everybody out of millions of dollars. I, but wrong is wrong, though. You know, I don't think that we were big enough to where with the way that we that you walked away from it would affect anybody except for the guy that we paid back. Not the only, one guy that we had we it, paid 200 bucks or whatever. But it ain't even like all that. It's just the embarrassment of, you know, how it what, ended. What, failure? That's life. That was a bad one. No. It meant a lot to me. And the way it ended, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't happy about it. And, I, dude, I, I went away from music even. I didn't listen to music for years. What? That's dog shit. I listened to sports radio in my fucking car every day. I, I didn't listen that. to shit. I don't believe Promise that. you. Mm. Promise you. It took a long time to fucking get me back even to... That's why, like, after 2010 or so, I don't have any memory of, like, new music after that. Unless it's some stupid shit that I heard in your car. Right. Because that's all I listen to. <laughs> well, not all, but I listen to the radio. A lot. A lot. Mm-hmm. But um, I lost my fucking train of... Oh, the poc- starting a podcast. But yeah, that's... Uh, I had an apprehension to do that, you know? Like, because I knew what it was going to mean... To, to get back into something with like creative like that. I knew that I was going to, I couldn't just like do it just to do it. I was going to want to do it and go full clip again, you know, kind of like the Joe B thing, you know, where you can't just go at half speed. I knew that if I did it and I liked it, it it's going to be the new thing. And here we are three years later, you know, I mean, yeah, somebody have to answer to anybody. Somebody brought that up the other day. They were like, you know, OG listeners of your show don't even realize you didn't even start out as the host. Like that wasn't even your show. You fucking came in and took it over. Yeah, you had to. 
Well, unless it was going to stop, you know. Mm-hmm. But and look who's standing. Yeah, here we are. I'm waiting. It's always I'm us. telling you, I'm waiting for the summertime next year because that's when the changes always happen, and I'm waiting for next. What? Next Come May. On. I'm waiting for June, maybe, and you're going to tell me, hey, you know what? I'm going to do my own thing. No, I think what's going to happen is when everybody comes down in February for the Super Duper Bowl next year, the Super Bowl next year. Oh, we're doing a Super Duper Bowl. No, we're just going to do the Super <laughs> I just call it that now just because that's what you I call it. call the regular Super Bowl yeah, Super Yeah, I just Duper? call it that now because of Adam. So I think what's going to happen is Adam's going to come down in February, and then he's going to end up moving here in summer. And then you guys will do a show, and then I'll get the boot. That Well, no, because I, I, there's things behind the scenes even right now that I'll, I'll talk to you about off air that I don't want to put out there just yet. Oh, my yet. God. I don't want to put out there just yet. But um, that that's not what's going to happen. Adam's gonna, I'll tell you what's really going to happen. Adam's going to get all fucking wifed up between now and then. No. Yes, he is. Yes, he is fucking too. He's going to find him a nice little steady piece of ass, and then he's he's going to forget all no, about no, all there's that There's lots shit. of those down here, Adam. There's plenty of that shit down here. Mm-hmm. But he ain't trying to fucking move down here, and I ain't trying to break up Sam PC, so... No, I mean, there. I just like giving him shit because he talks shit about moving. Joby asked us, when are we coming for a visit? That was his question. When it's not snowing. Joby, any pod. He literally had a snow day yesterday. Yeah, I know. I saw. Yeah. Because I'm in the chat now. Yeah. It makes everybody <laughs> so, so happy. It's so funny because now you can't talk shit about me, even though you probably don't, but. I don't talk shit about it. And if I do, I talk it to your face. I know. Oh, man, she's on one today. Yeah, when you are, you are. <laughs> Bree, via Instagram, in the DMs, why did you start a podcast? I didn't. We <laughs> we just covered that. <laughs> we just talked about that. I, well, I got a little bit deeper on the origin of the record label. They kind of spun into that. But uh, yeah, Bree, via the Instagram DMs, why did you start a podcast? I didn't. My friend Carp wanted to do it. He had the idea. Mm-hmm. And um, whenever anyone asks those questions in those podcast groups or whatever, why'd you start a podcast? I always answer with one word. Joe Rogan? That's two words, and that's a name. Rogan? Spite. Why? Because Carp. Carp Why is was everything be- Spite? Carp was getting wrong. Do you remember that? He was on that other show, and they kind of kicked him off, and he was over here licking his wounds about how he got kicked off that other show. And I was like, fuck you, dude. We're going to go, and we're going to make our own show, and it's going to be better than theirs, and da-da-da-da-da. Do you remember that? Yeah. That's the only reason I agreed. Because I was like, fuck them. And then mm, for a year later, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. So that's, we didn't actually start it, but we're going to finish it. God damn it. Mm-hmm. And I'm on the show because, well, it's fun. Yeah. Well, you came on full time around episode 46 when Carp left because mm-hmm. we had a we had an empty seat. And um, yeah, I mean, it just made sense. I think... You started sniffing around. We did about 10 episodes, and you started sniffing around the mic. And Two Rings was always pushing you. He was. He was always like, when are you going to get on the mic tonight? You know, like, <laughs> it, it, he wanted you so My bad. My first episode was Christmas, that Christmas episode. It, you came on a few times, like, in the teens. And mm-hmm. they were they were super drunk, and they were super messy. Like, you, oh, yeah. you got those two all fucking, like, just gassed up. Like, when you when you came on, because it was a fourth mic. There was four of us. And you, you just came on with fucking wine bottles and shit got everybody all gassed up because back then you knew i think it was a little bit of like you knew you weren't coming back in a week so like you could just come in burn the motherfucker down and then you were <laughs> gone for 20 episodes you know maybe and then you come back and do it again and like you just had to well, appear once i think it's different when it's just the two of us when jason was here and adam was here i could be a little bit more like there was more it content for me to talk about like dick sucks and like just being <laughs> stupid or whatever or it's shock value you yeah. you say shit because you want to see what their reactions are going to be and you yeah. don't give a fuck what my reactions are so you nope. don't say shit no more well that's not true i just i'm not set up like i used to be is all <laughs> i'm sorry i suck two ring is nasty two <laughs> ring two rings <laughs> two rings the porno king two two rings Always the porno king hell, hell yeah dude. he would say something Ooh. and just look at me waiting for me to say something about eating a pussy or sticking a dick in my butt he would just look at me I, like you know i wish that with he his had, shaking legs i wish he had more of a fucking drive to do this shit man because yeah. like i i miss him being around i do too and it, uh, it. I mean, it did change the dynamic. Now, I look forward to seeing him every Friday. Well, no, I, I, in that aspect, I, I do miss him. But in the, you know, the opportunity that you and I have had to 
connect better with having these conversations and kind of have more real talks and like fucking use this more to to help us like i think that's been a benefit and i am sure. glad that we have had that opportunity Same. and i can't believe that it's been 25 episodes already yeah it's crazy which yeah i didn't really intend it to be like that on 125 you know like a 25 since it's just been me and you but you know it just happened that way and it's kind of nice to look back and see yeah. what we've done since the change but yeah, that's why we started or didn't start, whatever. Um, Kaz says, what's your worst Valentine's Day experience? Kaz from the Hood Diner, shout out. I don't think I've ever had a bad one, to be honest. I'll tell you remember. my best one. What's your best one? My best one was when we were in the apartment in Crown Point, and I was like 50 pounds lighter, because I always lead with that. You do? So, I don't understand why that's a fucking thing. I don't know. know. I don't know. You you have to be like, well, I was skinnier. Well, that doesn't affect the fucking story it in does. the lightest. If it's, you're visualizing me in things, it does. Okay. Well, so, go on, skinny girl margarita. What? Oh, no. So our, I went to, I had like a little outfit or whatever, and I had gotten like fake fake pet, like flower petals or whatever, and I had put them all over the bed, and then I had these little tiny like red and pink tea candles that I lit, and you probably don't remember anything because you got CTE. I'm checking my hard drive right now. Keep on going. Keep painting the picture. But I was just waiting for you to get home because we didn't have kids then. We just had the cat, so then I just waited for you to get home. <laughs> I just had the cat. <laughs> but I think that's probably, well, I think last year I gave you a body massage. With some oil, and then I lit that that instant that candle was like bamboo something something. The night and then is still I played, young. And then I played like ocean sounds or something on the that. speaker. I didn't think that was Valentine's Day. Yeah. Oh, wow. And I, I laid that. a towel on the bed, and then I gave you a body massage. Hey, the night is still young. I we ain't can, got that in me tonight. We could say, hey, let's let's, <laughs> let's get it in you. Oh oh god. I'm doing it in the window. Fucker. <laughs> I don't really remember specific Valentine's Day because like we said at the top, we don't really do it and we never really, never really have. Mm -mm. But I remember when we were younger, one of our first, if not the first Valentine's Day we spent together, we got dressed up like with, like I had a, I remember I had a tie on and we went to a nice dinner. I don't remember where. And we went to see Hannibal in the theater. <gasps> that was Barocco's. No. We in, bro in downtown Glenwood? No, there's yeah. no Baracos in Glenwood uh, for one. Oh, I know, I and know. Baracos didn't even enter our life until like f five Ooh. years ago. I know where we were. I can see the restaurant. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's you're in downtown Homewood. Bogarts. No, it wasn't that one. <laughs> no, it was like an Italian style restaurant. In I don't remember. Downtown Homewood. Not important. I don't remember. If anyone from from our old days listens, downtown Homewood Italian, hit us up just so we can have peace of mind. Yeah, it was, but it was in like, I remember where it was. It was like in the little part of town. It's like across from where the Aurelio's was, or there's an Aurelio's in Glenwood or Homewood. And then across the street, there's like little streets that you walk down and it has like shops and restaurants. We were in there. I don't remember. I do. I don't remember. Well, at any rate, we went to a, a nice restaurant that we probably couldn't afford at fucking, you know, our that time in our life when I was bagging groceries or whatever the fuck I was doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had a nice dinner, and then we went to see Hannibal, mm -hmm. which I thought was so fucking dumb, but that's what you wanted to do, so like that's what we like went that. to do. Yep. And, My day. Uh, I don't think anyone else was in the theater because it was Valentine's Day and we were watching the dude get his fucking scalp pulled off and they were pecking at his brain and shit. So <laughs> I think it might have just been the two of us in Valentine's Day watching that shit. And I think we made out a little bit, you know, and it was nice. And that's the really one of the only ones I can remember. Yeah, I don't think I ever had any Valentine's Days like with any other boyfriends because we were just kids. So we'd see each other at school. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you it's, know, it was, maybe get a flower or some shit. Being that we got together as young as we did, I mean, like, yeah, it's it, mm -hmm. it's it's a lot. I mean, like we and we couldn't afford a lot we for a long time. We couldn't afford a lot, and like it's been so long, and it's been so long that we have not made a big deal out of it. So I mean, like when we were young, young we did, but I mean, like as the years went on, I mean, like we're we're fucking cool all the time, dude. Yeah, we want to do something, we just do it. I bring you flowers in fucking September. I bring you flowers in fucking May. I bring you flowers in fucking whatever. It ain't got to be today, right? No, that's right. That's and, what I say. And then you get mad at me because I don't put the flowers in water. Yeah, I bring you the shit and you throw them on the fucking counter and don't even look at them. So I'm like, okay, I just bought myself flowers because here I am fucking cutting them and putting them <laughs> in the fucking thing. 
But uh, last but not least, I want to play a voicemail for you that uh, that came in through this post asking for questions. Okay. It's from a guy named Joe, and he allegedly found our post for this in one of the Facebook groups, you know, kind of like an Elsie Brown situation. Sure. And he called us, he was doing a live video, and he called us on his video. Okay. All right, here we go. Fucking Matt is live on the show. All right, Chris, what's going on, brother? So this is Joe Madness. We're doing a fucking show right now, live on Facebook. Promote your podcast, live <laughs> on fucking the Thank Joe you. Madness show. All right. So I want to get everybody listening. Whatever you're doing, I feel like it's fucking fire. Oh. I'm loving it. I think that you got a lot of knowledge on what's going on in the podcast world. So if you're interested, DM me. I'm on Promote Your Podcast. That's why I found you. I found your post. Let's see what happens. I want to get you live on the fucking show. Whether you want to talk about yourself or you want to talk about what's going on in the group. I'm all about it, brother. Let me know. So his name is Joe. Joe Madness. Okay. I think is what he calls himself. Mm -hmm. I did a little reverse engineering here because... I didn't see that he did a video at first. Obviously, I just got the the voicemail pop up, and I couldn't really understand what was going on. And then I kind of played it a few times, and I I, I heard that he said, promote your podcast. So I went to that Facebook group, and I started scrolling through, and I saw a video that Mm -hmm. was live, and I matched the name. Cool as fuck. He does these videos every other day or so where he's just sitting in a room and he gets his shit out and he plays portions of people's shows and kind of uh, like i don't want to say critiques but like get, get, you know gives a little like you know thoughts on what they're doing oh, maybe cool. right or what they're doing wrong and you know check out their youtube check out their fucking website whatever and uh yeah dude i'm gonna hit your dms because i would love to fucking talk to you i mean like that's what uh that's what we do i, I promote i've got six other fucking rings of death here that i can i can tell you about if you you think that uh, you know, you like me, you're going to like my, my people and my friends, uh, even extended beyond the, the fucking circle. I mean, like, uh, I'd like to see all of us do well that, that we communicate with, you know, like, I think it's really cool what you're doing and, uh, I'm going to be hitting you up. So be on the lookout for that one. Sir. That's awesome. And I appreciate your kind words. You know, like he, I went back and I looked at his video and he sh- he held his phone up to the camera and it was that stupid picture of me with fucking Logan Sonic the Hedgehog hat oh, on yeah, and shit. Yeah. And he's like, I really think this guy knows what he's doing, man. Like, I like his look. And I'm like, I look like a fucking half a retard, dude. Come on, man. <laughs> well, and that's relatable to a lot of people. Yeah, I guess. You know, like if you're a Momo that wears Sonic hats, I mean, like hit me up. Hey. Yeah. But uh, yeah, again, I, I appreciate the, the call and I appreciate the kind words and uh, I will be hitting you up soon, brother. But that's all I got in the form of questions. Cool. Baby girl. Cool. Do you, uh, do you have anything else that you want to that you wanna speak on this week? No, I talked about diarrhea, so that's good. Okay, check. Talked about barfing. Check. Talked about buttholes and dicks. Check, check. I um, think I'm good. I think that's the Valentine's Day uh, quadra palooza. There you go. Because it's four. I know. Yeah, I was, and I almost said quadriplegic. I think so I butts and myself. dicks count as one. Butts and dicks do not count. As one. <laughs> <laughs> what? 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 Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, this has been a special rainy night Valentine's Day Florida edition of the hashtag No Offense Show. If you're a new listener, uh, shout out to you. Thanks for giving us a shot. Mm-hmm. 125 episodes. I, I never thought that we would hit uh, 25, let alone 125, but here we sit, and we're going to be sitting when the dust settles. If you're an OG listener that remembers episode 25, shout out to you. Shout out to you for sticking around. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Uh, come back and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're available everywhere. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts. You know the deal. We are members of the Inner Circle Podcast Network. Look for us on social media at Inner Circle PN. Look for us on the web at innercirclepn.com. And it's me and my whole Wu Tang clan of killers. Yeah. All standing together, arms locked like Red Rover mm-hmm. and them, dude. Hold on. <laughs> Who's that? Who's that? The plunge. The number one pug podcast? <laughs> this, side, this side of the Bermuda Triangle? Yeah, dude. Check out, check out the plunge. Hold dude. on. Let me do another one. Who's that? Who's that? Hood Diner. Hood Diner. Hood Diner. <laughs> Hood Diner don't do that no more. Unless. Oh, you're referring to the opening ceremony. I am. I'm referring to the opening ceremony. That was some good ass cacciatore. <laughs> that was some good ass cacciatore, man. Then me do another one. Tell me what's your flavor. Tell me what's your flavor. Red Bull flavor. That's 
Bobby. <laughs> that's, that's, my, that's my man, Bobby. That's Simmons and Moore. Simmons and Moore. Now, let me tell you about this other podcast. He's a dude, like not un- unlike any other dude, who likes to talk unlike any other dude, who has a lot of words to say like any other dude, that tells you a lot of stories about the same things in different words like any other dude. I don't know who that could be. Schweipen. Ha! <laughs> Teamailme.com. And then there's the last one. There's not. There's two more. There's two more? Okay. All right, so. I'm going to pop quiz. <laughs> on, on. Oh, shit. All right, the next one is. So let me tell you about these headlines and not these stories. Ron Burgundy? <laughs> I am Joby of the Joby Show. On the Joby Network. <laughs> he hates us. I so know, bad. I know. I only did it because the hunt did it on the last episode. The hunt does it on everything. I know. The hunt is wild and reckless. <laughs> Anyways, that's any pod with Joby. And <sighs> I love you, Mikey. <laughs> that's that's it that's it if you want to hear about movies and shit and they talk to some cool people go listen to feeling hollywood yeah this week he had the dude from that band fun on yeah remember that song Tonight. i know I, I sung it on uh karaoke at the karaoke when we went to the strip club that night it's a lot in that statement you just said that's I know. that's a lot mm-hmm. and i was sick but you, i still got up and sang you always sick what no i ain't never sick, sick in the head yeah. Look for us. If you those those are our homeboys. If mm-hmm. you want us, follow the socials. HDNOS on all the socials. HDNOS dot com. HDNOS at yahoo dot com. Send us those messages. We actually did get one that I didn't understand. I'm gonna pull up my phone right now. So you, I ask for questions. Okay. This yeah. is what comes through the email. Okay. Squarespace submission. Uh, the name is Mrs. Anna Marie Schneider. Okay. Sounds like someone's grandma or someone that makes cookies. Mm-hmm. Or okay. Riley. Uh, email address, blah, blah, blah. Subject of the message is sausages. The message is officer. That's it. Officer sausage. That's it. Miss Anna, Mrs. She's married. Mrs. Anna Marie Schneider. Subject sausages. Message officer. What are you saying to me right now? (laughs) This is what I'm dealing with. Okay. Shout out to you, Mrs. Anna Marie Schneider. Make me some fucking pretzels in them. You and Auntie Ann and fucking uh, Mrs. Fields and them. Y'all get Mrs. together Fields and make some fucking cookies. snacks. Yeah, make some fucking snacks. All right. Uh, call us on the on the line like uh, Mr. Joe, Joe Madness did at 813-773-5706. She is the Duchess Wetzke on Twitter. I am. Follow that. Mm-hmm. I'm also uh, Mrs. Wetzke on Insta. And you are the real Wetzke everywhere. I am. Mm-hmm. And together, we're the Hashtag No Offense Show, and we spit that hot fire. Love you. I love you. Happy Valentine's Day. I was talking to the listeners. How dare you? <laughs> I love you too, though. Yeah, I don't want it anymore. Peace. <laughs>